Good morning, boys and girls. Today we are going to continue with our in-depth study of the story, How My Family Lives in America by Susan Cuckland. We have reviewed Sanu, and Sanu is from Senegal traditions and American tradition. So her dad is from Senegal. In Senegal, they call their grandmother Mambu Dijin. They wear African clothing, have play on an African drum. She um, has the Senegalese twist hair braid that's very popular hairstyle in Senegal. They make chibujen dinner, which is um, a fish and vegetable and rice dish. They eat on the floor and they eat from one bowl with their hands. Now those are some traditions that they have in Senegal. Some traditions we see in America that, that uh, Sanu discussed, she calls her grandmother grandmother and that grandmother sang lullabies, hush little baby, and they eat with a fork. Those are some American traditions. Now something you'll see in both cultures, they go food shopping, they play American lullabies on the African drum. Sanu's brother Badu combined an African Senegalese tradition with an American tradition and uh, created a whole new tradition using both cultures. They Both cultures go to work with their mothers and they invite family for dinner. So these are things from Senegalese culture and American culture. Then we moved on to Eric. This is Eric. And Eric's traditions come from Puerto Rican culture and American culture. So in Puerto Rico, it's warm every day. Not like here in America, at least in our section of America, where it's cold and we have a winter. If you go down south by Florida, you may have similar weather to what it's like in Puerto Rico. They speak Spanish. Everybody speaks Spanish in Puerto Rico and they use sofrito spice mix. They eat arroz con pollo, which is rice with chicken. They have a canicieri, oh, this word's so tough for me. Carniceria, which is a meat market. It's kind of like a butcher, but they call it that. Muchas gracias, which means thank you. And they have a healing poem. It was a very nice um, healing poem, sana, sana, sana that they um, will say when someone has little hurts, little cuts on their fingers, little pains, they sing that poem to help them heal. And they dance the merengue. Those are all things from Puerto Rican culture. And then we see in American culture, we predominantly speak English, but this is tough, like I've said, because in America, we don't have just one language. We have lots of languages from lots of different cultures. People speak Spanish here too, but predominantly things are in English and you will see most people speaking some sort of English. And we say thank you instead of muchas gracias because that's English. But things you're gonna see in both cultures, baseball, baseball is in both cultures, in Puerto Rico culture and American culture. And everybody has to do chores. Kisses from grandma, that's something you'll see in both. Saying prayers at night, you'll see that in both cultures and lots of cultures. And dancing, everybody loves to dance. Lots of different cultures love dancing. So, now we've seen Senegal and Puerto Rico. We are gonna move over to Chinese cultures and American cultures. And that is with this girl right here named April. So let's go to April. That's her name. We're not talking about the month. I'm talking about her name, April. Here we go. My name is April. I also have a Chinese name, Ching, which means admire and Lan, which means orchid. Both my parents are Chinese and were born in Taiwan. Taiwan is an island on the other side of the world. My papa came to New York without his parents to go to school and my mama moved here with her family because Julius, my older brother, and May, my older sister and I were born in America. We are called Chinese American. And you could see over here, this is how she writes her name. 
So she has, she says, my name in America is April. So she has an American name, which she says is April. And she has a Chinese name, which she said is Chin Lan, which means admire orchid. Chin Lan is her Chinese name. So in that culture, they have a name that's easy for Americans to say, and then they have a name that is Chinese. Let's move over to this page. There are many Chinese Americans, but we do not all speak the same Chinese language. The way my family speaks Chinese is called Mandarin. So Mandarin is a Chinese language. Like how in Puerto Rico, they speak Spanish. In her section of where she is in China or where her family's from in China, they speak Mandarin, but she's right. Even in China, there are so many other languages and variations. Mandarin. In Mandarin, I call my daddy Baba and my mommy Mama. It sounds something like English, but when we write the words, they look very different. So we have her saying Baba for daddy in Mandarin. Put that here. Baba. And we say, so she says Baba for daddy. What do we say in America? Daddy or dad, father. Another thing that's different in Chinese is that words aren't made with letters. Each word has its own special marks. So here we see some very interesting Chinese marks. So here is the American, or English, I should say, English way of writing father, but this is the Chinese way of writing father. And here's mother. This is the English mother, and here is, I guess, Mandarin mother. So, here in China section, they use symbols to write, right? You don't see no ABCs. They use these beautiful picture symbols, like we see here. Unlike we see here, that's how they write. They use symbols to write and we use letters in American culture for the most part. Let's move on to our next page. During the week we go to public school but on Saturday, we go to Chinese school. There we learn how to speak and write in Chinese, like my parents learned in Taiwan. When I write English letters, I write from the left side of the page to the right. When I write in Chinese, I write from the right to the left, and I write in rows from the top of the page to the bottom. For us Chinese American kids, there are many things to remember. So she goes to a different school on Saturdays to help her learn Chinese because there's so much. Let's look over here. You can see some of the pictures she uses to write. Remember we said that they use symbols to write and not letters. In school, we also learn a special kind of writing called calligraphy. We use a brush instead of a pen. Let me see that here. She's using like, it looks kind of like a paintbrush. We use black ink and special paper made from stalks of rice. Our teacher shows us the right way to hold the brush. Okay, so in 
Chinese culture, do they use pen or brush to write? Use brush so that they can do calligraphy. They also use pens there too. Let's not forget that they do, this is for calligraphy, to use the brush, calligraphy. And what do you mostly use here in America? Pencil. Okay. Now that is all of the reading that we are going to do for today. I want to quickly show you your assignment. Here we have the China section and the America section. And you are going to put the different things. You're going to sort them out. Okay. Where they belong if there's any in both. And quick, 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 let's just show a map so you can see where China is. Okay, so this is America. United States of America, New Jersey's over here, and China is all the way across right here, this yellow one. Look how big China is. It's so big. And there's the United States, our little tiny state right here. Big China, so big, huge China. So that's where April's family is from. Okay, hope you enjoyed this video today, boys and girls. Good luck with your sort, and I will talk to you tomorrow. Goodbye.